The title of my talk today is Data Like a Girl, Building a Data Girl Squad. And I think the reason, or this largely comes from my experience navigating the field in academia. And as, I mean, it's, it's fairly new that we are situating computational skills and computational studies within humanities and social, um, social sciences. This has largely been subject for the sciences or the information scientists. And um, now that this is coming or being merged with the humanities and social sciences, I think that there are so many opportunities out there for us as academics, for upcoming academics um, to navigate that space, especially given the context that we find ourselves in today, the fourth industrial revolution. A little bit about me, um, um, as Anelda said, I am a postdoctoral research fellow at the Center for Africa-China Studies at the University of Johannesburg. Um, but in addition to that, I also teach Introduction to Data Sciences at Wits University. And this is a new course that, um, my, like I said, myself and my, and my graduate advisor um, had pioneered, or we are pioneering. This is the first time we're teaching this course in the Faculty of Humanities slash Social Sciences. Um, just a way of introducing and getting people within the field to think more and buy into computational um, skills and, and data science and data management as well. I have founded two book clubs. They're fairly new as well. Um, one of them is called African Girls Do Read, and it's a community of um, women, um, young girls who just love to read or, or want to have a reading habit and we meet um, and we decide on a book for the month and we read the book and we have an end of book discussion to discuss what we've learned and also just to catch up and, and see where people are joining us from. And the second is the African Women in Political Economy and Development and this was co-founded by a friend of mine, Alicia and Lovo. And I think when we discussed this, we were like, we don't know so many political economists who are African women in the field. I only know you and you only know me. <laughs> and I think other women we've identified uh, perhaps live you know, in the US are, like, are based in the United States or other parts of, 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 the, of other continent except for Africa. And also we've been able to identify some you know, political economists um, who are African women in the continent and we're making efforts to reach out to them. But the purpose of this book club basically is to get young and upcoming political economist um, scholars or development economist scholars just to come together um, as African women and see how we contribute to the narrative, see how we contribute to the literature. And one day we're hoping to make this a proper research hub or a think tank, but we'll get there. We're starting off for now with a book club. Okay, hobbies, what I like to do, I love to read, but in addition to that, I love to cook and I definitely love to eat. That's a no-brainer. And sometimes I share my recipes uh, on my Instagram handle, um, Abang Deli Casey's. But uh, just to sum me up, I am an African woman in academia and I hope to make a difference one lecture at a time, one publication at a time. So why did I choose to um, title my talk Data Like a Girl? I think um, this stem for me, this stems from the narrative um, surrounding women or the girl child. And, you know, I mean, when you look in literature or you draw on the feminist school of thought just to examine the perspectives that they bring to um, academics, whether you're doing security studies or um, core development issues, whatever the case might be. And it, it becomes almost alarming that the voices of women tend to be eroded, if not left behind in most of this literature. And you find the feminist school in every, almost every branch of study or every um, field of study, there is often a feminist perspective that introduces and brings in, whether one likes to argue forcefully, a gender narrative, a gender perspective in understanding how something has happened or how, it, or how patterns of behavior are shaped or what the outcomes have been or how even policy decision makings um, are, are informed. So for the girl child, I mean, we often get described by uh, as being soft, as being fragile, as being, um, you know, needing assistance or needing help. But I think women are resilient. I think that Resilience is one thing, one, one word to describe women. We are independent, we are carriers of life, we are doers and we are shakers. And the fact that this has been um, somewhat, the, the construct in literature um, around women doesn't quite um, replicate or, or um, demonstrate this is one thing that bothers me. 
But I think that the era that we're in, the era that we find ourselves in, allows us the, t the opportunity to flip the narrative around and, and prove and show that women have a lot to bring to the table. Till date, um, gender equality remains a struggle. And I think that data science, that having data science and computational skills as part of humanities and social sciences does give women a chance to you know, contribute and bridge and deal and manage with uh, manage um, gender in, um, inequality issues, especially within the academic um, environment. Like I said, we exist in a knowledge economy and that means that information is right there at our fingertips. We don't have to depend on traditional sources of information to understand or to analyze and see what it is that's happening with us as women in Africa or to even tell our stories. I mean, I think one, one thing I have, I have learned so far is the power of perception data. Um, I mean, we don't have to wait for a World Bank report or a WTO um, report um, to understand, you know, how our economies are faring um, or how the climate change is even impacting on somebody on the grassroots. We could run a poll, we could have a poll, whether on Twitter, on Facebook or whatever platform we choose to just to get a, a true African perception of what these means. And you, sometimes you would find that um, especially on topics like climate change. Most people on the ground still have a different perception of what that is. The government have a different perception of what that is. And the international community has a different perception. So when it comes to policy making and implementation, there is a gap right there. So there is a need um, for women, for us as upcoming academics uh, or within the academic space to do something to participate, to engage data, engage within this knowledge economy and produce, not just engage and learn and see how it works and know that it's there, but also to engage the data and produce work or produce um, for, for consumption, whether we're, um, for future generations, for policymakers, or whatever the case might be. So basically, this age that we're in, data science as well, presents African women the opportunity to flip the long-standing narratives that exist about us as girls and women generally, but especially about us and uh, as African girls and African women. Okay, so what opportunities does data science offer girls and women? Like I said, the main thing for me is changing the narrative. And I think we could also, we could spend the whole day here talking about the other opportunities, but I'd focus mainly on changing the narrative. First, um, the, the field of data science has largely been male dominated, and I think Anelda alluded to this initially during an introduction. And, um, and we, with having more women in the space, with, with combining or bringing in computational sciences and computational skills into the field of humanities and social sciences, um, it allows or it opens up the space and allows it to be more inclusive, especially for women and African women, allowing us the opportunity to become active participants, not just in the consumption of information, but in the creation of information and for telling our stories as well. We, go, we, we have the opportunity to go beyond um, knowing that knowledge exists, but also engaging actively by telling our stories doesn't matter what field you're in, whether development, security, economics, politics, environmental issues, it really doesn't matter. But um, you have the opportunity to rewrite that African narrative, rewrite and um, rewrite or correct the wrongs um, that have been longstanding about um, the perception um, that you know different um, parts of the world have about Africans, especially African girls and African women. Um, you, you, I mean, there are career opportunities that you could pursue. Research is one of them. Data analysis is another. Um, risk analysis in different organizations is another. But dear to my heart um, is lecturing. And of course, we do need more women who are competent um, in data science or in having computational skills in the space of humanities and social sciences. Where can I find or sign up for programs on data science? Well, I think Vibesh um, did touch on some and Anelda also touched on some, but to the best of my knowledge, these are informations that I have. I know that at UJ, um, they recently just concluded a compute, um, computer programming bootcamp. And I think, I, I hope they would have other series so that students could participate and learn at least one programming language before they complete their respective degrees. Um, I think it's been hosted by the Department of Politics and International Relations, so I hope that it continues so that the students 
um, in the department and in the whole of social sciences could buy into the program and learn at least one compute, um, um, computing language before um, they, they complete their programs. At Burt's University, we have the data science course, as I mentioned earlier, um, it's a new course for the honors um, students. And it's just a way of breaking the ice, getting them to understand that, you know, data science is not just for the STEM field, even though you don't have a background in STEM, um, it's something that we could also do. There's so much data in humanities about issues that are pertinent or, or important um, within the humanities and social sciences. And we could also apply the same skills in understanding and populating the literature and producing um, information as well. Um, also at WITS, there is a master's in e-science. I think this is done in partnership with the Department of Science and Technology, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and this is a master's program. So the honors program would be the brick in the ice, the intro level, and then the master's would be the more intermediate slash advanced level of um, um, data science. Then there are summer schools that you could sign up for. I attended, I think, last year. I attended the Summer Institute in Computational Social Sciences. It was hosted at Stellenbosch, um, although it was virtually because COVID-19. Um, but there are other summer schools that you could attend. Um, and please look them up. And I think that also another important initiative is the one um, being managed by Anelda and a team, the Digital Champions Initiative. I mean, I've been part of the Slack group for less than a month now, if I'm not mistaken. And there's so many opportunities that have been shared on the group and there's so many opportunities that you can even if you're a beginner you're a learner you just want to know what this is about there's so much information and i'm sure she would share what her resources with you like i said i mean i was never part of a community but i have met i've recently met um vibash and i think she's won me over <laughs> so i will be signing up for our ladies and i i hope to remain part of the um the empower track program and you know learn as well learn as, as i go but also um, have the opportunity to encourage others to you know join us in data science it's really it's it's challenging from the outside when you think about it but once you get um you take one step at a time it becomes something you get accustomed to now my story um i also used to have a fear for numbers um, um believe it or not um, and unfortunately, I have some of my, my students here, and I'm sure they're wondering this one. <laughs> uh, you ever had a fear for numbers? Yes, I did. Uh, and I think I, I have my graduate advisor, Professor Rod Allens, to be thankful to um, for his persistence, because I remember I took the course in my honors year. Um, it was just the quantitative research methods. Um, and then he had a, stats, uh, a statistics course um, for the honors class and he was my great advisor at that time and he encouraged me to take the class and I think after the first class I was like I can't do this this is this is too much for me uh, I remember with a couple of friends we used to we used to eat in the class and sleep in the class because it was just a lot <laughs> out of our comfort zone but anyway um, fast forward to master's level um, I mean, I started tutoring for the course um, and co-teaching the course, and then for I applied some descriptive analysis in my master's thesis, and then also did the same for my PhD. And now, voila, we are co-teaching a data science course. So I'm grateful that he never gave up on me and he nudged me. So that's the beauty of community, as um, Vibash mentioned. But there is a much larger community out there other than your graduate advisor, and I think you you need to take advantage of that. So that's my story and that's my presentation.